Friends, we are welcome to the Discipleship Cruise. Please get your friends, get your family members, <coughs> get anyone who you can get, because we are going on a journey. And we pray that this journey will benefit all of us in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we thank you because you are the journey. And this journey you are the driver. Lord, please, oh God, please help us. Help us because this life is getting tougher and tougher and tougher. We know that you are going to see us through. Lord, please help us. Grant us entrance into your word. Grant us understanding. Grant us a deep analysis of your word. That we may not, we may not but be, be beginners in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go back to our reading in Mass Gospel, chapter 1. Let's read it again. The same passage you read last week, Mark Gospel, chapter 1. And he healed many, verse 34. He healed men that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils, and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. In the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a sweet place and there prayed. And someone and they that were with him flowed afar off, flowed after him, sorry. When they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. He said unto them, Let us go unto the next town, that we I may preach there also, for therefore came I forth. And they preached in their synagogue throughout all Galilee and cast out devils. Amen. We tell you from verse 34, and he healed many. And he healed many. That's the characteristic of Jesus Christ. He healed the sick. He cast out many devils, many, de many demons. And it allowed many devils to speak because they knew him. He cast out many demons. That's our background to this to this to this revelation. Why could Jesus cast out many demons? Why could Jesus do so much signs and wonders? Why could Jesus do so many miracles? How was he, as if to say it was his second, second nature, as if it was his, his gift that is given particularly to him? Why would we not see many of these things done in our day? That's the question I want to ask you. I don't want to say, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to, 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 to I don't want to look at all these kind of things you see happening everywhere. People using all kinds of things. I didn't see why Jesus used anything. He just spoke. And things happened. Why was it that it was so, so simple? Now, I want to go on. It was because his beginnings were good. His beginnings were good. See, See, our lives are, are broken into compartments. If your first part of your life is not good, then your, your, your second stage will not be good. You're not a good... You don't have a good, consistent, quiet time alone with God. You will not grow. And therefore, you will not be able to do this thing that Jesus did. Jesus Christ was... Remember that Jesus Christ didn't do any signs and wonders before he was 30. He did, a lot of, he did a lot of good, good things. He was a carpenter. But he didn't do any signs and wonders until he was 30. When he went to the Holy Ghost baptism at, at, at River Jordan and came out, and he began to do all kinds of signs and wonders. Remember, I don't want to forget. Many of us want to jump into signs and wonders when we cannot do them. So, we, so instead, of, instead of persisting and waiting, we go and copy Many people are getting their power from the devil or from other, other spirits. But the Bible said, I know where Jesus was coming from. I know why Jesus did so much wonders. I know why Jesus did so much miracles. I know why Jesus did so much signs. And in the morning, 
he never missed it. He never missed it. In the morning, he waked up me morning by morning. He was waking every morning by the invisible God. He waking him. He waking him. And in the morning, they were sleeping in the same house with the disciples, twelve of them, maybe two or three rooms. And he was not sleeping alone. But in the morning, rise up a great while before. So, so let me say again, in the morning, you want to do any devotional, you want to do any devotions to God. There are, devo- there are times for devotionals. There are 6 a.m. in the morning, time of of morning, 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 morning sacrifice. Then 12 noon and 3 p.m. That's the time of sacrifice. But the most important sacrifice is the morning sacrifice. That when they collect their manna. <coughs> That's when the Lord said, "Go out and collect your manna. Don't go out and collect your manna before the day breaks properly. The sun will melt the manna. You will go hungry that day." It doesn't, it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't give room to laziness in the morning. My master was, I don't know how late he, he went to bed last night, but early in the morning, he was already up. In the morning, let me say it again, in the morning, rise up a great while before the night. In the morning, oh, I cannot leave this morning. Many people of nowadays, in the morning, they take up their telephone. The first thing they do in the morning, they take out the telephone and find out who called and who didn't call. Thank God in the days of Jesus, there was no telephone. But that's not, even if Jesus lived today, in the morning he will do this, he will not take his telephone. You must cure yourself of some things. The telephone can wait, the messages can wait. In the morning, the morning is for devotional. For a, a set time to do quiet time with God, a set time to to, to to commune with the Father, a set time to be alone with God, not a time for 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 for, for shouting for shouting and making noise on top of your voice. It's, it's a quiet time, a devotional. The morning, rise up a great while before day. I don't know when he slept. I don't know whether he slept up to three, four hours. But in the morning, he got up. It was in his thirties now. So he could get up at that time. You see, if you miss your time, if you miss your life, nobody will tell you. you, are not, if, you if you get born again at the age of 20-something, at the age of 30-something, and you don't learn this habit, there's a time when it's very difficult for you to get up in the morning. I tell you, I know what I'm talking about. When his strength starts failing, but God may suffer for that. You are not permitted to go to where you might have retired. That's the whole morning for before you. But when you are attached something, that something years, that's when you must wake up early in the morning. Rise up a great while before day. Rose up a great while before day. I don't know when this time is, but it was a great while before day. It was still dark. The morning had not broken forth. If it's four o'clock, it was still dark. Five o'clock, it was still dark. The sun starts coming out around six. So it was, it was, it was, it was a great while before day. And he went out. These are very important issues. Very important matters. He went out. And they put into a solitary place and they are praying. I think this, this could have been best acted in the morning. That's not a great while before day, around four o'clock, five o'clock. He went out. He left where he was sleeping. He left where he was resting. Hallelujah. This is very critical. This is very crucial. This is very, very important. You cannot be doing your quiet time in the company of many people. That's a lie. You don't have room. You must go out to a solitary place. It's time alone, time alone, time alone with God. 
You must go out. You may find out a classroom near your house. You may find out that your kitchen. You can sweep it very well. You can find out a house that is completed near your house. You can make it your time, to, your place to spend time alone with God. It must be a place. You're not, you're, not, you're, not, you're not allowed to have this quiet time, three or four of you in a room. No. No. You cannot have quiet time. Quiet time is not a time of shouting. Quiet time is a time of reading the Bible, praising God. After praising God and, and becoming in tune with God and having his, uh, hearing, and having his, 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 having his voice, having his ears, then you begin to begin to you begin to read your Bible or you begin to pray. That's what is happening. That, 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 that's where we pray, that's where we read our Bibles. That's where we take our notes. So it must be done alone. If God is convicting you of a sin, you don't confess a sin in public. Don't confess a sin and say, I thank you, Father, because you are just convicted of adultery. Or fornication, I say in the midst of your friends, you will say it boldly. God knows it. So he said, Time alone. You have to be alone as much as is practicable and possible. If you do this very well, it will not take you many years before you arrive at where you are going. You went out. There's, there's, a, there's, there's, there's something about going out of the place where you were, where you were sleeping. It makes you alert. It makes you wake up properly. Some people wake up, they stay on the bed, and they say they are doing their quiet time on the bed. I know what happens. You will sleep, you will sleep, you will sleep off again. You don't get up and go out to go and wash your face, to go and toothpaste. You go and do certain things, and then you go to a solitary place. You may have missed that day. I'm just giving you advice. Those that grew very fast, those that became something in the hand of God very fast, ask them. Ask them. They know that they had to do this very well. They went out into a solitary place. They went out. So because Jesus was in a room where he had so many people that, I mean, that few people with him in that room, he couldn't have done his quiet time in that room. He went out, he went, he went up, he pasted, washed his face, then went out to be fully awake. It's not, it's not always, it's not God that does everything for you. God will wake Jesus, but Jesus has to wake himself. No matter how busy he was last night, this morning he had to wake. And if you are going to be a leader, you are going to be a disciple, you are going to be a pastor, and you are sleeping with some men, and they wake up before you, oh my God. That's a very, 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 very bad example. If you are going out with some men, and they wake up before you in the morning, I don't know, I don't know how, you can, how you can excuse yourself. He went and went out to a solitary place. So, 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 so the time is important. The place is important. A time and a place. The time is important. The place is important. To a solitary place, a place where he can be solitary alone. And there, he prayed. Hallelujah went out, took his Bible, took his writing, writing, writing notebooks, and these are not notebooks that are flimsy. Don't take a flimsy notebook that you can discard after one, after one month. No. Take a, a, a notebook that will last you forever. Gather your notebooks. Pick your daily guide. Take your dictionary. Take whatever we, we give you aid in studying the Bible. 
Go there. Go and be alone with God. I cannot stop teaching this. And many people cannot afford to abide by this. What they do every morning is not enough to put them to put them above in life. Jesus took his Bible, took his notebook, took his dictionary. I don't know whether there was a dictionary those days. I know there was an Old Testament, took his book, and he did a thorough, thorough, thorough devotional. He will sing his songs, he worship the Lord. If you don't worship the Lord and sing your songs, you will, your mind will keep wondering. Even when you have sung enough and you have, you say you have worshipped, you will be, your mind will still be wondering. You have to bring your mind back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He went at the very solitary place and spent some hours. When he was coming back, his face was shining. Every day, he began with a shining face. He had been with his father. They have communed. He has spoken to his father. His father has spoken to him. He wrote it down. He has committed his, his life in prayer. And there's no way, no way Jesus can do without this. And there he prayed. He prayed means he communed. But I said something to him. He wrote it down. He wrote it down. He, 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 he took his notes. Oh my God. I pray that you will do this. You will learn this. That you will learn this thing. If you don't get it. Ah. Uh, you must get it. This is what makes men great. This is what makes men extraordinary. This is what makes men, the men you see, who are, who are thoroughly out of this world. This is what made them so. This is what makes men to be in the Bible, to be in the scriptures. When a man makes up his mind that this is what I must do every day and I must obey the law, when I learn, Ezra, Ezra, Ezra chapter 7, let's look at Ezra chapter 7, Ezra chapter 7, let's look at just Ezra chapter 7, I will, I will just show you what Ezra did. Ezra chapter 7 verse 10, For Ezra had prepared his heart to see the Lord the Lord, to do it and to teach in Israel statutes and judgment. This is Ezra, in the Old Testament. Why did Ezra become great? Why did Ezra become a great man in captivity? Why did he become a great man in, his, in, in, his, in Israel? Why was he sent back to Israel? What more like any other young man? Why was he picked out? Why, what, why did he become a, an extraordinary priest? For Ezra had prepared his heart. I wish I can look at this in different versions. You will see what the word prepared means. Let me let me let me let me try and Ezra chapter seven. Verse ten. The the, the living the living translation says this was because Ezra had determined to study, to, <coughs> determined to study and obey the Lord, the law of the Lord, and to teach those decrees and regulations to people in Israel. Because Ezra had determined, Ezra had committed himself to studying the revelation of the word, God's word, to live in it and to, pre, to, to, to teach Israel to live his truths and ways. It was, it was, Ezra had committed himself. It was, he had prepared his heart. This was because Ezra had determined, prepared himself, committed himself. He was a committed man. When he started doing this, nobody knew him. He was living among the captives. As he did this every day, every day, every day, he grew and he became known. 
for Ezra had prepared his heart, committed himself to seeking the law of the Lord. He committed himself to seeking the law of the Lord, that he will seek the law of the Lord. He will read, this, he will read, the, he will read the law. That was what he did. Nobody knew what, what gift Ezra had. But Ezra committed himself to seek the law of the Lord. And to do it. Not only to, to, to get it, but to do it. And to teach in Israel statutes and judgments. So before he taught it, he will, he will, he will first of all seek the law of the Lord, do it. So it's not just to teach it. He will get it and practice it before he will go and teach it. Oh, what the man determined he was a captive. He was, he was going to be nothing in life. But he determined before God and said, Lord, Lord, if you give me your word. And he succeeded. He became a very well known priest, my friends. I'm telling you what is going to benefit you forever. I see many young men who are not ready to benefit, they just jump out. And they want to become ministers the first day they are born again, when they are still little, little children. They don't do this thing, I'm telling you, and they are not going to benefit. God is a regular God, He's not an irregular God. Except you do these things, you will not, will not be, you will not be reckoned, you will not, be, you will not come to reckoning. These are spiritual facts. A solitary place. You must go out from the crowd, you must go to a solitary place, and there you must pray. A time and a place. And what you do there is to pray. To read your Bible, to sing praises, to read your Bible, and to pray. If you do this daily with your notebooks, I don't know what you will become, but I know that you will become something in God's hands. You see, the anointing does not just come upon a man anyhow. Doesn't come upon the man anyhow. So, my friends, you see, the Bible says, and Simon and they that were with him followed after him. Simon and his and his and, and, the, and, the, and the fellow disciples, they were not they were not able to get up when Jesus woke up. That's why I'm telling you that if you're a disciple <laughs> and the disciples wake up before you, you make a mess of your life. Simon and those that were with him, they eventually woke up. They were disturbed by the people who had come for crusade. They were making noise already outside, so they woke up. They followed after him. They knew, I think they knew where the master would be. But the master would not be in the room, he would be somewhere. When they had found him, they had to look for him to find him. They said unto him, All men seek for thee. All men, they have gathered again. Come and do your miracles. Come and do what you, what you are used to doing. Come and come and do something. Come and do a great work again. Hmm. And he said unto them, Let us go to the next towns, that I may preach there also. For therefore came I forth. Let us go to the next town. I will preach there. That's why I came. I don't. I don't listen to the, to the people who are coming for Christ. I listen to the Father. My quiet time, I listen to God. I don't listen to these people. If I was going to attend to them, I would not leave this place. They will detain me forever. My ministry will just be a small ministry. So I have to, I have to, I have to go. Let us go to the next towns. Leave them. Don't worry about them. I know them. When they gather and there's no, there's no preacher, they will go home or wait until the preacher comes back. Let us go to the next towns. But therefore came I forth. My friend, where do you come from? Where do you, why do you come forth? We need to think of, this, of these things. <coughs> we need to pray about these things. We need to ask God, our time is passing. Jesus knew where he came forth. In the ages of 30 and 33 and a half years, he knew where he came forth. And those, uh, those three and a half years, he didn't, he didn't spend a lot of them preaching. He the last part of three and a half years talking to 12 men. May God help us. May God help you to be up and doing. 
I hear a lot of noise that Christians make, but they have not done this thing. They have not done this. This is the first part of your life. This is the first thing you must do. This is the first thing I see my Lord Jesus doing. And he continued doing this all his life. He will not preach except he did this. Sometimes I hear some men of God say, I fasted so much when I, I, I was looking for anointing. Now I've got the anointing, I don't fast again, I eat chicken, I eat everything. My friend, my friend, can you go back to where you got your anointing from? That's why many people have lost their anointing. They couldn't, they couldn't, they couldn't continue their anointing. They lost it. And I say to you, friend, this is the most important matter in our lives. The quiet time, the, the time alone with God. This is the most important matter. And I pray that you will, you will be found doing this thing at the age when you should do it. I don't, I don't want to tell you some secrets of, 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 of the anointing. Personally, if I told you you may, you, may, you may misuse it for this one of them. If you come to my bedroom, you see the notebooks I keep. I've not told you about the kind of guide you should use. I went to pray that you will use a guide that is continuously studying the Bible analytically. I use the five year guide. The five year guide. Every day I study a part of the Bible consistently. I've gone through it many times. And God is, God, if you don't know, God is blessing a man who, who reads his word, obeys him, and continues like that. And he preached in the synagogue throughout all Galilee and cast out devils. That's, what, that's where he got the power to preach and cast out devils. So may God help you. I'm not saying you cast out devils, but you have the gift of the Holy Ghost. That gift not be made manifest properly except you continue in this. May God help us. Let us pray together. Father, I thank you because you are, you are God. I will never tell a lie. You are not a liar. You are God. Thank you for your people who are called by your name. Thank you for those who you are convincing by this topic. And they are going back to the world. I pray that Lord, in a few years time, they will appear. Resolute, they will appear made. Lord, please do a, a quick work and cut short in righteousness. Those are friends who don't know you, who are just religious. Lord, please draw them to yourself. Open their hearts. Cause them to know you. And cause them to be born again properly so that when they come in this, they will see the result. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. For further inquiry or counsel, Contact Reshes Media Center, number one, Refuge Close, on Gwambarde, Sabon Tashia Kaduna. Telephone numbers 0814-408-9412, 0805-845-5719. Email address threshesteam at yahoo.com or you could visit our website at www.threshesteam.org.ng.